Let's pray. Father, we love you. Baba tuakupenda. We thank you that your word is alive and active. Tuakushukuru ya kwamba neno lako liko hai na linafanitenda kazi. a two-edged sword. Liko na makali kuliko upanga wenye kuwili. It divides the soul from the spirit. Ina tawanya roho na ata the bone from the marrow. Mifupa na ata nyama. Your word is truth. Neno lako ni ukweli. And truth sanctifies. Na ukweli hutakasa. Thank you that you've given us your word today. Speak. Nena. Cleanse. Takasa. Let us know what we should do. Tufunze na tuelewe ni lini pitufanye. And let your spirit come upon your word. Na neno lako lijawe na roho wako mtakatifu. And empower us for service. Na utupatie nguvu za kutumikia wewe. For your glory. Kwa utukufu wa jina lako. Amen. Amen. Please. Faiza Keti. Thank you. Asante. Thank you uh, Bishop Alice for Asante. your friendship. Asante Askofu na Pastor Alice kwa urafiki wenu. Alice said yesterday that we are in the diaspora. Uh, Pastor Alice akanena jana akasema sisi tunatoka majuu. But we are still family. Lakini bado sisi ni wajamii. Uh, many of you know Sharon Recently my youngest daughter Liberty has been here too. And uh, we're coming to know and love you even more. Uh, the bishop and Alice have stayed in our house. Uh, the many times the bishop has been in England and we've traveled together. Na mara nyingi ambapo wako Uingereza tunasafiri pamoja. Once he brought Alice. Na mara moja tu akamleta Pastor Alice. In the middle of the winter. Na ilikuwa katikati ya ile wakati wa baridi sana. Which is not fair. Ambayo haikuagi ni ni furaha sana. In the summer it's quite nice in England. Ah wakati wa jua inakuaga ni kuzuri sana Uingereza. I think you should have a discussion about this. Na nafikiri Alice tunastahili kuketi na tunene juu ya hii. Which brings me on to my friend Stuart. The first time we came here together 15 years ago. And we made friends and became family. And some of his family has been here. Including his daughter Ruth who works with us at home as well. And his daughter Ruth is getting married this year. Yeah. It's going to cost him a lot of money. <laughs> He's actually got another child getting married this year. It's going to cost him a very large amount of money. And as soon as the bishop heard about this, he said, you must invite us to England. And this time it will be the summer, probably. So Alice, <laughs> So that would be wonderful. Uh, Stuart is family, but he is also a uh, trustee of Grassroots, which is what Sharon and I uh, set up as a charity a while ago. Yeah. 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 Trust on afanya na kazi. So um and also thank you. Na nashukuru. Thank you to all of you that treat us as family and welcome us and let us talk. Asante kwa vile mnatuona na mnatukalisha kama wa jamii, tunashukuru. And ask questions and get involved. Na tunapowauliza maswali mnatujibu na tunaweza kunena pamoja. You are very kind. Nyinyi ni watulivu sana ni wazuri sana. We are just very strange Christians from England. Sisi ni wa Kristo wa ajabu kutoka Uingereza. Trying to do our best just like you. Tukijaribu kufanya vyema tuwezavyo. So listening is a, a great honor. Kwa hivyo kunisikiza mimi ni ni heshima kuu. And also I want to thank your musicians. 
Na ningetaka kuwashukuru waibaji wenu. And the worship band. You are wonderful. Ha watu ambao wanatuongoza kwa kuabudu ni wa ajabu. I keep wanting to play along with the guitar, you know, like this. I can't play, but I, uh, I do it in the air, you know. Na jaribu kucheza hiyo gitaa lakini siwezi kufuatilia vizuri. The danger is that they'll put the camera on me and I'll be doing this. Ah. Uh, <laughs> na mara nimejiona kwa runinga nikijaribu kuicheza. And that would be uh, embarrassing. Na hiyo inakuwa sio ya kupendeza sana. So the word of God today. Neno la Mungu leo. The bridegroom edition. Ah katika hii edition ya bwana harusi. What makes a bridegroom glorious? Ni nini inayomfanya bwana harusi kuwa na utukufu? What makes a bridegroom glorious? Ni nini itakayomfanya ama inamfanya bwana harusi kuwa na utakati na na, na utukufu? What is the glory of God? Utukufu wa Mungu ni nini? What is the glory of Jesus? Utukufu wa Yesu ni nini? Before time began, God had glory. Kabla ya wakati kwanza Mungu bado alikuwa na utukufu. He had all the power. Alikuwa na nguvu zote. He had a beautiful place to live. Alikuwa na pali pazuri pa pa kuishi. He shone with glory. Yeye alikuwa anaangaza na utukufu. And all the angels worshiped. Na na malaika wote wamtukuza. But that is not the glory. Lakini hiyo sio utukufu that I am talking about. Ambao nanena juu yake leo. Because having made the human race, Sababu, having made the human race, having, uh, mwanadamu, God, Mungu, in Christ, Daniel Christo, wanted to be a bridegroom. Arusi. Talking of the glory of God, we can just talk about heaven. Kwa hivyo tunapoongea juu ya utukufu wa Mungu, itatubidi tu tunaongea juu ya mbinguni. But talking about the glory of the bridegroom Lakini, is impossible if you only talk about heaven. Lakini tunaponena juu ya utukufu wa Bwana harusi, itakuwa itoshi kuongea tu juu ya utukufu ulio mbinguni. Because a bridegroom cannot be glorious without a bride. Ni sababu Bwana harusi hawezi kuwa na utukufu bila bi harusi. However you celebrate your weddings a bridegroom doesn't really get it unless the bride is glorious. Aha, na wakati ndoposherekea harusi mpaka bi harusi afike hakuna sherehe. There was a day. Kulikuwa na siku in heaven na binguni when God siku Mungu who wished to be the bridegroom. Ah looked at us and saw us in the mud and the mire of our own sin our misunderstanding and he wanted to be a bridegroom so he became a man and he got involved. Akawa binadamu na akaja ili ahusike nasi. And the Bible actually says it. Na Biblia yasema kinagananga ya kwamba the glory utukufu that Jesus is after. Ule utukufu Yesu anatafuta is in the bride. Iko ndani ya biarusi. It is in his people. Iko ndani ya watu wake. Even at the just before the cross he says, "Glorify me." Hata kabla ya msalaba akasema nitukuze. And what's he saying? Na ananena anasema nini ama namaanisha nini? He's saying to the father. Anasema anamwambia baba, glorify the son just as you glorify yourself. Utukuze mwana kama vile wewe mwenyewe unajitukuza. He's trying to go to the cross. Anajaribu kufikia msalaba. He wants to go to the cross. Anapenda kwenda kwa msalaba. Because it's the only way to get a bride. Sababu hiyo tu njia namna ya kujipatia biarusi. It's the only way to take us out of our sin. Hiyo tu ndio njia ya inafaa ya kutotoa kutoka dhambi. To clean us up. Na tutoe na tulete juu. And make us able to be his bride. Na tufanye tuweze kuwa biarusi. And if you look in the scriptures and you study it you'll find it in all sorts of verses. Na ukisoma Biblia utagundua ya kwamba iko katika maandiko nyingi. 
You'll find it in Revelation. Utaipata katika kitabu cha ufunuo. You'll find it in 2 Thessalonians 1:10 to 12. Utaipata katika Thessalonike wa pili. You'll find it again and again. Utaipata mara katika Biblia. The glory of the bridegroom. Ya kwamba utukufu wa bwana harusi is in the fact that he has made it possible for us to be his bride. Inapatikana ni kwa ajili ameifanya kuwezekana sisi kufanyika biharusi. And the only way he could make it possible. Na njia tu ya kuifanya itendeke was to come down into the mud and mire with us. Ilimfanya akuja akae nasi katika matope ya hii ulimwengu with a powerful holiness akiwa na, na, na utakatifu mwenye nguvu such a powerful holiness that even the dirt of the world would not make him unholy yani alikuwa na utukufu wenye nguvu hivi ya kwamba hata mambo yote yaliyo mzingira haingemfanya awe akose kuwa mtakatifu to pick us up out of the mud and mire ili aweze kututoa kutoka kwa matope ya dhambi to clean us kutuosha and by revelation na kupitia ufunuo to put clean linen on us aweke usafi ndani yetu and now he's waiting na sasa agoja for the bride to be complete ili biharusi akamilike because he's longing for the day ni sababu atafuta siku for the great wedding feast akitazamia siku ya uh, kubwa ya harusi yake when something somebody will be able to say please stand up because the bride is here aha siku ambayo tutasikia mtu akinena hebu mkasimame ni sababu biharusi anaingia and then he'll turn alafu tutapinduka and he'll see us na atatuona and he'll smile na atatabasamu and welcome us to heaven na tukaribisha mbinguni and all of creation will look na viumbe vyote itaangalia and they will say that is the glory of god na itasema na kukiri kwamba huo ni utukufu wa mungu you see there is no glory and power Hakuna utukufu na nguvu and shininess na hata kumelemeta if you have no love ikiwa hauna upendo the glory of the bridegroom is he loves utukufu wa uh, biharusi ni upendo he gave everything to have a bride alipeana kila kitu ili apate biharusi that's his glory hiyo ndio utukufu wake do you know what makes the devil tremble unajua nini namfanya shetani kutetemeka It isn't saying that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Sio kusema kwamba Yesu ameketi kume kwa baba. It's saying the blood of Jesus. Ni kunena damu ya Yesu. The blood of Jesus. Damu ya Yesu. If you ever want to see someone delivered of demons, you claim the blood of Jesus. Unataka kuona mtu akikombolewa kutoka mapepo, nena damu ya Yesu. Because that's the glory of God. Sababu hiyo ndiyo utukufu wa Mungu. The glory of the bridegroom is the blood of Jesus. Utukufu wa Bwana harusi ni damu ya Yesu. All the power of God is in the blood, the love of God that is prepared to get involved, deep involved and break the power of sin and raise us out of darkness. Nguvu yote ya kuvunjavunja na kuharibu kazi za shetani na upendo ambao uko unaohitajika uko damu ya damu ya Yesu. Because he didn't have to do it. Lakini haikumpidi afatene yale. He did it because he chose to. Lakini alifanya ni sababu ametuchagua. He chose to love us. Alichagua kutupenda sisi. He was in glory. Alikuwa kwa utukufu tayari. But he needed a different glory. Lakini alitamani utukufu wa tofauti. So he gave away his glory. Kwa hivyo akapeana utukufu wake to have a better glory. Apokee utukufu ulio bora. And you know there is another part of the glory. Na unajua kuna sehemu nyingine ya utukufu. The bride. Ambao ni ya biharusi. As they enter. Anapoingia. As we enter. Tunapoingia. We are going to choose to be there. We will choose to be there. Tutaamua kufanyika vile. No one can become a Christian because God forces them. Hakuna yote atafanyika mkristo kwa kufa, kwa kulazimishwa. Because there is no love in being made to do something. Ni sababu hakuna upendo wakati unalazimishwa una kufanya jambo. If the bride comes in and said well he made me do it. Ah, uh, biharusi anapoingia na anasema labda ata, ataifanya. Then that's not love, is it? Hiyo sio upendo. Why is it glorious at a wedding? Ni sababu gani harusi huwa na utukufu? Because the bridegroom chooses it. 
ni sababu bwana harusi amemchagua bi harusi and the bride chooses it na bi harusi amemchagua bwana harusi they both say i will na watu wawili wasema nitatenda and one day na siku moja all of us wote sisi will say i will tutasema mbele ya yesu tutatenda we'll say i will it, you'll say i will utasema nitatenda nita We already say I will, don't we? Na tayari kwa kumkubali tumesema tutatenda. And one day together we'll all say I will it. Na pamoja siku moja tutasimama mbele yake na kusema tutakuwa. I want to be with you forever. Eh, natamani niishi na wewe milele. And ever. Milele na milele. And death will not part us. Na na kifo haitatuzuilia. The marriage feast of the lamb will be glorious. Aha. Uh, sherehe ya, ya bwana harusi uh, mwana kondoa Mungu itakuwa ni ya utukufu mkuu but we're not there yet lakini hatujafika pale bado today leo i'd like to read a scripture nataka nisome maandiko which is about today ambani juu ya leo we're in matthew's gospel iko katika kitabu cha mathayo chapter 5 Uh, mlango wa 5 verse 13 to 16 Mstari ni wa 13 mpaka 16 Says you are the salt of the earth Yanena ya kwamba ndiye chumvi ya ulimwengu But if the salt loses its saltiness Lakini chumvi kipoteza uh, ile ladha yake How can it be made salty again Itafanyika kuwa na ladha tena aje It is no longer good for anything Haitamaniki kufanya lolote except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot Ispokuwa itupwe itupwe na ikanyangwe You are the light of the world Wewe ndiye mwangaza wa ulimwengu A town built on a hill cannot be hidden Ah mji ambao umejengwa juu ya mlima hauwezi ukafichika Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Tena watu hawezi wakahakisha taa na wanaificha. They put it on its stand. Ina unatafuta mahali pa imeinuka. And it gives light to everyone in the house. Bali ukiweka itapeana nuru kwa kila mmoja katika nyumba. In the same way. Katika hali ile ile. Let your light shine before others. Ruhusu nuru yako ingare kwa kila mtu. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Ili kuona matendo yako mema na wamtukuze baba yetu aliye mbinguni. Jesus says to the church. Na Yesu anenea kanisa. After the resurrection. Baada ya kufufuka. As the Father sent me. Kama vile baba alivyonituma. I send you. Na kutuma. We've just discussed how God came into the earth in Christ. Tumeeleza tu kwa kifupi vile Mungu alikuja akiwa ndani ya Kristo katika ulimwengu. To get into our mess. Ili aingie katika shida na uchafu wetu ili atuweze kutuinua. To clean us up. Kutuosha and to make us his bride. Na kutufanya bi harusi yake. In the same way as the Father sent Jesus. Aha, na vile vile Mungu alivyomtuma Yesu. He sends us. Yesu anatutuma. He sends you. Anakutuma wewe. He sends you. Anakutuma wewe. And he sends you. Na anakutuma wewe. As it says in 2 Corinthians. Vile inavyonena katika kitabu cha Wakorintho. God is asking us to fill up in our bodies what is still left of the sufferings of Christ. Mungu atuomba ya kwamba tukajaze katika mili yetu iliyo mabaki ya, ya ile kusurubishwa kwa Yesu. The sufferings of Christ were to get into the dirt of this world. Mateso yake Yesu ilikuwa ili aweze kufikia kina cha ulimwengu huu. With a supernatural holiness. Akiwa na utakatifu wa kiungu. So that instead of the dirt of this world making him unholy. Ah uh, ili badala ya uchafu wa ulimwengu kumfanya awe sio mtakatifu. He instead brings people out. Yeye katika utakatifu wake akatuinua. This scripture says the same thing in a parable. Ah, hii Biblia hii andiko la nena juu ya hilo kwa agizo. Now you're very well taught at DC Kasarani, aren't you? Na naelewa ya kwamba nyinyi hufunzwa vyema sana. I want to thank you for thank you Emily for your teaching this morning. And uh, nataka kumshukuru uh, Pastor Emily kwa mafunzo yake. It's very good teaching and for a preacher who's coming afterwards it's slightly threatening. Aha, na katika mafunzo yake ilitokezea na nguvu mpaka yatisha kwa mwingine kama mimi. I said as we got into the boardroom I said, well you've said everything now. Now what do I say? Aha, tulipoenda kunyikoa kwa break nikamwambia sasa umesema kila kitu mimi nitasema nini? So you're so well taught you know what kind of salt this is don't you Aha mimi naelewa kwamba mmefunzwa vyema mnaelewa juu ya chumvi How many of you think this is salt like you spread on the, your food Hello How many of you think it's salt that you spread on your food 
Do you spread this salt on your food or put it in your cooking? Do you put it in your food? Put your hand up if you think it's you put it in your food. It's a trick question. <laughs> Do you know the Dead Sea? The Dead Sea in Israel? I'm, I'm told the bishop's been to Israel. Every time he speaks from now on, he's going to be telling you about Israel. <laughs> Did you go to the Dead Sea, Bishop? Did you swim in the Dead Sea? Ah. She floated. <laughs> ah. You throw her in and she floats. <laughs> and why does she float? You don't know. Excellent. Why does she float? If you sit in the Red Sea, why do you float? It has lots of salt. So much salt that the water is so heavy in each square centimeter that we are light and we float up. But one thing happens in the Dead Sea. Water flows into the Dead Sea, but it does not flow out of the Dead Sea. The only way water gets out of the Dead Sea is if the sun shines on it and the water evaporates. So the salt gets bigger and bigger. And on the edge of the Dead Sea, you can see crusted salt, like crystals. So you might think, I will collect the salt, and I will put it on my food. No, no, don't do that. If you do that, you, you will be very ill. What's more, even your food will feel ill. That salt is full of all sorts of weird minerals. Now, in the time of Jesus, they collected this salt. But, but it was not for food. Do you know what it was for? There was a particular job that happened in every community. In your communities around Kenya, you have long drop versions of this. I'm going to use some words that are not often used while preaching. I don't know what the common words are in Swahili, so I will just try and use words in English. They didn't dig big holes in the ground. They just had a pile on the edge of the village. And when you needed to go, you went to the edge of the village and you did your thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a very nice pile of hu human ex excrement on the edge of the village. So kila kijiji likuaga na human waste. Kinyezi. And, uh -huh. and there was a very important job for the youngest child. Kulikuaga na yawale wandogo imeekwa kando. His job was to take, normally a him, I think, probably, a little bucket of salt. Uh -huh. And this salt must be kept very carefully because it mustn't get wet. Because if it gets wet, all the power goes out of it. But if it's okay and it's not got wet, you can take it and put some on the poo. Oh. Sorry, sorry. You have to say this word. You're the translator. <laughs> it's, 
Everybody's got some, haven't they? <laughs> you seem to have gotten what he said. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on the poo. Aha, unaichukua na unaweka kwa chakula. Hallelujah. It's on telly. <laughs> right. And if you do, na ukitenga vile, it breaks down. Ina ina yayuka. And over a period of time, na baada ya muda kidogo, it becomes fertile soil. Inakuwa tena ni mchanga which you can grow stuff in. Ambao unaweza kukuza mimea pale. Now we know what Jesus is talking about. Sasa mnaelewa ni nini Yesu anasema juu yake. Look at me. Muniangalie. You are salt. Nyinyi ni chumvi. Your purpose a kazi yenu is to get into the poo. Ni kupata ile kinyezi. That's what Jesus said. Ile pupu. Ah, that's hivyo ndivyo Yesu alisema. You're the salt of the earth. Nyinyi ndiye chumvi wa ulimwengu. That's your job. Hiyo ndio kazi yenu. You're a Christian. You're the salt. Ah, wewe that's ni meant Christo to go in the poo. Chumvi. Say it to your neighbor. Tell tell mwambie. Get in the poo. Aha. It's your job. <laughs> mwambie ye ni chumvi kazi yake ni kusafisha kinyezi. Excuse me, it says in the Bible Naomba msamaha lakini nimeisoma kwa Biblia that Jesus said it. Na Yesu alisema mwenyewe. It's in red. Imeandikwa na red. You know the red bits? Eh rangi nyekundu. All the Bible is inspired but the red bits just a bit more Jesus said them. Ah hiyo Biblia nyingine yote ni black lakini pale Yesu alisema imeandikwa na red. Do you know which bits of poo you're meant to get into? Wewe unajua ni aina gani ya pupu utapata? It's the call of God. But if you lose your saltiness, lakini ukipoteza ile ladha yake yako ya chumvi, you know use. Sasa unakosa kazi. Jesus, Yesu, said as far in, as the Father sent me, so I send you. Akanena akasema kama vile Baba alivyonituma na watuma nyinyi. That's the same thing. Na hiyo hiyo ndio iliyomo katika maandiko. He came out of heaven into our poo. Ali alitoka binguni akakuja kwenye uchafu wetu. The cross was the ultimate of that. Na msalaba ndio ulikuwa mwisho ama kilele cha kazi iliyomleta hapa ulimwenguni. He's told us to do the same. Na akatuomba tukafanye vile alifanya. With the power of God within us. Tukiwa na nguvu zake Mwenyezi Mungu ndani yetu. So that not that the poo makes us dirty but that we break down the poo and we liberate the world. Wow, sikia hii ili ya kwamba sio pupu itatufanya uchafu. We have to have the power of God. We get involved and we change it because of the power of God. Tunahusika na tunaigeuza sababu ya nguvu za Mungu ndani yetu. It doesn't make you dirty. You break down the dirt. Kwenda pale chini. Because you're confident that you can go anywhere and do anything in the name of Jesus and he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Mhm. Ni sababu na nguvu ya kwenda pahali popote na wakati wowote na kwa ajili ya nguvu ya Kristo ndani yako unaweza tenda makuu because aliye ndani yako ni mkuu kuliko aliye ulimwenguni. A leper stood in front of Jesus. Na ni hivyo tu tunafuatilia mfano wake Yesu. He's infectious, he's dirty, he's dangerous. Aha, yeye ni anaweza kukuambukiza, ni hatari. He says if you're willing you can heal me. Aha, amemwendea huyu mgonjwa na anamwambia ukiwa ungependa naomba uniponye. Jesus touches him. Yesu anamguza. And then he's healed. Na anapona. Jesus knows he has to touch him. Yesu anaelewa ni lazima amguze yule mwenye ukoma. Because leprosy is poo. Sababu ukoma ni pupu. And it doesn't go away unless salt touches it. Na haitaondoka mpaka iguzwe na chumvi. If you will not touch the dirty person, you will not heal the dirty person. 
Ukiwa hutamguza mwenye uchafu hautamponya aliye na uchafu. But you must have the saltiness otherwise they won't get healed you'll just get dirty. Aha lakini lazima uwe na ile ladha ya chumvi ili ukimguza apone na ikiwa si hivyo utafanyika mchafu mwenyewe. Let me put this in a very controversial way. Hebu nijaribu tena kuieleza kwa njia ambayo inaweza kuwa kidogo haieleweki. A Christians call to go to bars. A Christian? A Christians call to go to bars. Mkristo ameenda kwa bar. Yeah. Are you called to go to bars? You're not called to be an alcoholic. Right? Mpiri anaitwa kwenda kwa bar. Lakini hujaitwa ukakunywe. Are you called to go places? Na unaitwa unaweza kuitwa uende mahali kwingi which are dirty ambazo ziko chafu and dangerous na zi, ni hatari Are you called to talk to prostitutes? Umeitwa hata ukanenea makahaba I'm not saying you're called to do sexual bad things. I'm Na saying are you called to touch people who are dirty? You're called to do that. You're not called to all get a factory full of salt and say isn't this a wonderful salt factory? Ah, ujaitwa ukajenge chumba kubwa ama factory kubwa ya chumvi, ukaweka chumvi pale na ukasema hii ni Collecting salts and making it clean salts is useless. You've got to touch the dirty. And make it clean. Amen. Amen. I have a friend He was a drunkard and an alcoholic and a, um, a drug addict. Alikuwa ni mulevi anakunywa madawa kulevia. And some people made friends with him. Na watu wengine akamfanya rafiki. On the streets. Kule katika He was sleeping on the streets. Alikuwa analala kwa barabara za mji. They were Christians. They welcomed him into his in their house and they washed him. Hao walikuwa ni wakristo wakamkaribisha yule yule jamaa na wakamuosha. They took him to a little place which had bunk beds and they let him live there for six months while he thought through. Uh, and they loved him and befriended him for six months and he became free of alcohol and he came to love Jesus. Wakamchukua wakamweka pahali ambapo palikuwa ni pasafi kwa miezi sita anaposaidiwa kutokana na ile nguvu za kulevia na wakampenda wakamuosha na baadaye akafanyika mukristo na akaokoka He was cleaned up alioshwa by the gospel na alioshwa na injili and by the church na kanisa Not just the gospel sio tu injili peke yake but by the church lakini hata kanisa ilikuwa were not afraid to touch him hawakumuogopa kumguza and to become his friend na wakamfanya rafiki yake they got involved with him wakawa na husika na yeye he joined the church akaingia ndani ya kanisa they sent him to bible school wakamtuma katika chuo cha biblia he became a theologian na akakuwa msomaji wa biblia he had an ma na akapata and he then went to pastor a church na akatuma akawa mchungaji kanisani and i met him two weeks ago na nilikuwa naye wiki mbili zimepita in his town katika town yake he got together with two other pastors akapatana na mapasta wengine wawili and ask the question how could we together as three churches be the salt of the earth in this community akawauliza sisi kama makanisa ya matatu ninaaje tunaweza kuwa chumvi katika mji wetu and they agreed to partner because there were many people on the streets who were drunks and drug addicts na wakaamua kushikamana sababu kulikuwa na wengi wanao walio kuwa naishi mtaani na wanakunywa madawa kulevia they would talk to those people walikuwa naenda wanawanenea and they would say if you would like to get free na wanaambia ukitaka ukiwa unataka kukuwa huru one church invited them in kanisa moja ikawalika for a wash and new clothes aha anaambia mkiwa mngetaka kuwa safi mkuje kanisani na wakatarisha siku ya kuwaosha na kuwavalisha nguo safi and then the three pastors asked what do we do then 
Alafu uh, wachungaji watatu wakaulizana baada ya hii nini tutafanya? This was in a difficult country which Christianity is illegal. Aha, hii ilikuwa ni nchi ngumu sababu Kristo hauruhusiwi. And evangelizing people is illegal. Na hata kuhubiria watu hauruhusiwi. But there's a little church where they have registered and they kind of keep their head down and are so this pastor is called Sasha. He invited us to his church. This building is a small building with a worship room and then a back room. You open the door. The entire worship room has mattresses. And then a cross at the front. Then you walk through this door into the back room and there are bunk beds full of mattresses. And there's a group of people sitting around the table having a Bible study. And they are all people from the streets who are becoming free from alcohol and drug addicts. I said to Sasha, how did the people in the church when you became their pastor react to this? He said some were very unhappy. He said we used to have they said uh, we used to have a beautiful church. You have filled it with all this dirt. Then he looked at me. And he said, I think this is beautiful. I think this is glorious. He said, how could, someone, how could God save me like he saved me? I may not want to care for others. He You might ask the question, what have you got? Moses, when he was called by God to go back into a poo situation. Said to the Lord, I haven't got anything. And the Lord said, what have you got in your hand? It was the only thing Moses had. And God says, I will put my spirit in that. It looked like just a stick. But it was enough. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. My friend Sasha took what he had. Asked God to fill it. And he's liberating the world. There are so many other stories. In the Bible. Elisha. I was talking to the bishop last night, not Jimmy, the other bishop. And he was talking about how you help people who are lost. And you need the power of God. You need your saltiness. You love people, but you need God to turn up. He had a little lady who said, my life has got nothing, I have nothing. How can you help me? Person of God. And he asked, Elisha asked, what have you got? 2 Kings 4. 
Let's put the power of God into what you've got. And we will break the poo of poverty. By the saltiness of the presence of God. And the lady had her little jar of oil. And he said, get every other jar you can find and fill them all up with oil. So Elisha did nothing. But he got involved. He invoked the power of God. He helped her see what she'd got. And trust in God. And it changed everything. Because often we haven't got anything, have we? The salt is just salt. In practical terms, we haven't got anything to give away. Except ourselves. And God says, as the Father sent Jesus, I send you, but not alone. You can overcome the world because you have the Holy Spirit with you. I'm coming to the end. There are two types of sin. There are sins of commission and there are sins of omission. Many of us as Christians, we're grateful that God has forgiven us, that we've cleaned up our lives, and that we're going to be part of the bride of Christ. Many of us, because we have become Christians, we have come out of poverty, and even have become rich. I know here in Kenya some of you have become rich from a background of great poverty. And then we want to belong to a beautiful church and we say thank you God you have made me prosperous and maybe give a little bit to charity to feel good about it and then God says take your life and use it the same way Jesus did because the bride isn't complete yet the bride are out there in the streets we won't have them in the bride if we can't get them in the bride now fill up in your own body what is left of the sufferings of Christ go into the world touch the world heal the world liberate from poverty in the power of the Holy Spirit and some of us go oh I don't want to touch it it's dirty and God says trust me you'll make them clean you won't get dirty and you go hmm, maybe I can't be bothered and Jesus says take up your cross and follow me and you say no I'll give my tithes it's fine and I'll send my kids to Sunday school and pray that they become Christians and the father says great give your tithe but give the other 90% as well and not just in the offering, wherever I tell you to say. You belong to me, all of you, now go. 
That's the gospel. Hiyo ndio injili. The bride's out there. Aha, biharusi bado wako nje kule. And you have the power of God. Na wewe na una nguvu za Mungu. To liberate it to become the bride with us. Unayo nguvu ya kuwakomboa wakafanyika biharusi wa Yesu. You have all that you need. Uko na yote ambayo unahitaji. Even if it only looks like a stick. Hata ikiwa ni kama ile kijiti cha Musa. You can change somebody's life all every day. Unaweza geuza ya maisha ya mtu mmoja. We're not trying to get all the Christians together in a big building. We come together here to worship God. To receive from God. And once we have freely received. To go. And give freely. Freely you've received. Freely give. Go in the power of the Spirit. Uh-huh. Don't be afraid. Uh-huh. It will work. You might die. Uwanze, but don't worry, you're going to heaven. Au, na ukikufa, you biburi. might get dirty, but Unaza he will wash you. Mtafu, yesu you might get hurt, but he will heal you. Kumizu, it's going to be okay. Go. Kuponya. Go. And, uh, you'll be all right. You are in fact, sawa. you'll be on the best adventure ever because he'll turn up and do miracles. How many of you want more miracles? Yeah, do you want more miracles? Uh-huh. Well, go because miracles happen when the kingdom of God is advancing. Some of us have sinned. Some of us have sinned. Aha, wengine wetu tumetenda dhambi by not trusting God enough to go. Kwa kukosa kumwamini Mungu ya kutosha tuweze kwenda. It's a sin of not doing. Hiyo ni dhambi ya kutotenda. How do we get cleansed of sin? Na tunaoshwa kutoka na dhambi aje? We bring our bodies to Jesus. Tunaleta mili yetu mbele ya Yesu. Say forgive us. Na tunaomwomba msamaha. And his blood. Na damu yake. Invisible. Forgives us of sin. In the Old Testament. In Leviticus. I just love this. The guilt offering. Leviticus 14, the guilt offering. It says, if you're guilty, you come. Inasema ukiwa wewe unajisikia umehukumiwa kuja The priest cuts naye makuhani atakata and gets blood na anatoa damu then puts blood on your earlobe na anaweka damu katika on your thumb sikio lako katika kidole cha and on your right toe na hata katika kidole kubwa cha mguu cha kulia If you have sins of omission it's because you weren't listening Sababu dhambi za kutotenda ni sababu usikizagi you weren't doing and you weren't going. Do so you need the blood of Christ on your listening? Because we choose what to listen to. If you choose not to listen when God tells you to go, you need the blood of Christ on your listening. If you choose not to touch, when Jesus says touch, you need to be forgiven for not touching. If you didn't go where Jesus told you to go, you need the blood of Christ on your going. And he you are forgiven. Even now you could be going and say, Supernaturally, invisibly, God put the blood of Christ on my listening. Touch your ear ear and say, thank you, Jesus, you've forgiven me. And then the blood of Christ on your thumb. And then say, thank you, Jesus, you've forgiven me for not touching. And if if you can, you could even... <laughs> Let the blood of Christ come on your going. You know what the priest has to do next? Any of you know in Leviticus 14? 
Na ukiyelewa iko katika Walawi um, 14 It says the priest then takes the oil. Inasema kuhani anachukua mafuta. Priest then takes the oil. Kuhani anachukua mafuta. Because being forgiven isn't enough, is it? Sababu kusamehewa si tosha. Otherwise we keep being forgiven and still not going. Still not doing. Sababu tunazidi kusamehewa kila wakati na hatuendi. So it says the priest. So um kuhani Biblia inasema kuhani then takes the oil. Anachukua mafuta and puts it on his ear. Na anaiweka kwa masikio yake akulia. And takes the oil and puts it on the thumb. Na anaiweka kwa kidole chake cha kulia. And then takes the oil and puts it on the toe. Na anachukua mafuta as a symbol of the saltiness the power of god and then having done that puts the oil on the forehead because the oil on the forehead is the anointing it is the choosing and accepting and the commissioning Would you stand please? Ebutusmame. <laughs>